What's up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab, reflected cross-site scripting in canonical link tag. This lab essentially demonstrates how it's possible to have a cross-site scripting attack vector on an element that's not visible to the user. For example, if we think about anything inside the head tag on a HTML document, it's not going to be visible to the user in most cases. So for example, if we had some kind of on-click listener to a canonical link inside the head tag. Well, there's a bit of a problem with that because the user is not going to be able to click on something that's not displayed as part of the page. We'll also talk about what exactly a canonical link is. Without further ado, let's fire up the lab. Now, the thing that we'll notice straight away is that there's no obvious input field on the page itself. And the only way we're going to be injecting into this is via the URL. So what we can do is formulate a query string on the end of the URL, and we'll just input an arbitrary string. We'll take a look at the DOM, and what we're interested in is whether this has actually been reflected to the page anywhere. And notice we have this link rel equals canonical with a href, and the href attribute appears to simply mirror the URL in the URL bar, because we can see our query string question mark followed by Zen shell. And this is not a DOM based reflection as such. The DOM wasn't manipulated here. This is actually part of the HTTP response that comes back from the server. For example, if we have a look at page source here, we can see that we are injecting into the raw HTML response that comes from the server, but we can obviously view that in the DOM browser as well. But it didn't get there via a DOM manipulation. It's part of the raw HTTP response from the server. Now we might be wondering what exactly is a canonical link. So we have link rel equals canonical. And this is really an indication to search engines that this is the preferred URL for viewing this particular content. In other words, we sometimes have pages with identical content, but different URLs. And it could be one of those URLs is the official URL where the user is supposed to view that content whereas another URL is a copy or it's an outdated link. And we want to specify which is the official URL for viewing that content. So that's what this does. It's an indication to search engines that actually this is the correct URL. Of course, if that URL is being created dynamically, one might wonder whether that's really the correct way of using a canonical link. But that aside, we can clearly inject into this particular canonical link. Notice it's inside the head tag, so it means it doesn't appear on the page anywhere. But our first obvious question is, can we break out of the href attribute of this link element? Because if we can, we may be able to add additional attributes to this specific link element. So notice there that the href attribute is wrapped inside single quotes. So the first thing that we'll try and do here is actually break out of that string using a single quote. Then let's try and add our own attribute. We can just say on click equals alert and let's see what we get. So we're going to take a look at the raw page source just to demonstrate that this is actually a response that's coming back from the server itself. We can see it's not completely clean here because there is what appears to be a trailing single quote, but we can actually absorb that by including a starting single quote before we type alert. So let's see if we can fix that. So what we can see is that we've successfully managed to inject into the page source here. Notice that attribute names are in white. We then have the attribute value in blue. We have on click in white signifying that it's being interpreted as an attribute for the link element. Then inside single quotes, we have alert tag. We only provided the first single quote, but the trailing single quote is obviously being provided by the HTML response itself from the server. So we have a complete opening and closing single quote. Now that's all well and good, but the problem is we can't actually click on this element. So we have managed to inject an event handler. If we could see this particular element on the page and we clicked on it, then we would get an alert popped up to the page. Problem is this is inside the head tag it's not loading on the page anywhere. So the question is, is there a way of clicking on this element, despite the fact that there's no physical reservation for that element on the page where we can focus our mouse pointer and click? And the answer is yes. And it's by making use of what's known as access keys. 
An access key is basically a keyboard shortcut for clicking on a certain element. It's not used very commonly and its exact functionality is going to depend on the browser, not all browsers support access keys. So this particular lab has to be solved in a browser that supports access keys. Access keys can be added as an attribute. So we're simply going to type access key equals, and let's give it the value of X wrapped inside single quotes. Let's have a look at our adjusted page source. We have this link element. We have access key attribute equals X and on click equals alert. And when we trigger this access key, it's going to be the same as clicking. So it will actually trigger this on click event listener. How are access keys used? It depends on the browser and also the operating system. So it's usually going to be something like Alt Shift and X or Alt and X, but you might need to do a quick bit of research depending on your operating system and your browser to understand how to trigger the access key. And keep in mind, not all browsers support access keys. So if you can't figure out how to get access keys working and you're trying to solve this lab, you may need to switch browser. Assuming the access key is triggered, it's basically the same as clicking on the element, which means if there's an on-click event listener, we're going to get this particular alert function popped up to the page. Heading back to the lab, we can see that the flag has been triggered just by virtue of the URL that we're making use of. Having said that, we didn't actually trigger the cross-site scripting attack yet. So let's imagine victim has visited this page with this specific URL. If they trigger the access key, so let's try something like Alt Shift and X. You can see it gets triggered. Apparently with Linux, Alt and X is sufficient. Let's try that. Well, it doesn't work in this case. So we can see Firefox run Arts Linux right now. We need Alt Shift and X to click that access key. It's the same as the element being clicked on. We get the alert popped up to the page. Now I would say this is a fairly obscure attack. I would say the information from this lab is somewhat hypothetical, of course it could be enough of an attack vector to get you a nice bounty if you are participating in bug bounty programs. But it does seem to me that this attack overall, even if the attack vector is successfully in place, it seems that the attack is unlikely to take place. The reason is fairly straightforward. Notice in the lab guidelines, it says, to assist with your exploit, you can assume that the simulated user will press the following key combinations, Alt Shift and X, Control Alt and X, Alt and X. Question is, why would the victim be pressing those buttons on their keyboard? It's not something that the average user is typically going to do. So I would say the takeaways are slightly more hypothetical for this lab. And I think one of the key takeaways is that even if an element is not visible on the page, it may be possible to have a cross-site scripting attack vector by virtue of the access keys features. In other words, there are ways and means of getting a cross-site scripting attack to work even if it seems non-viable initially. So this was a type of reflected cross-site scripting attack. It did require some user action. It's not an automated cross-site scripting attack, but hopefully you also learned about canonical links in HTML and also how the access key attribute works in HTML. All right, hope it was helpful. Thanks very much for watching.